Hi guys, how's it going? Gary from CompSci Guy IT. Welcome back to the final video in this little series of tutorials for our bomb and switch. In this video, we will be covering everything to do with the visual script to get our switch functioning properly. So before we get started, we want to think about what we want to achieve with our visual script. Uh, we want to make sure our switch can be activated from player input. We want to make sure that the switch knows whether it is active or inactive and that the proper material has been applied to it. Uh, we want the switch to spawn a bomb somewhere in our map and we want to uh, set a delay so we can't keep pressing the button and spawning bombs all the time. We want to put a delay on it so it's only happening every so often. And then once the delay is finished, we want to set the switch back to being active again and applying the material so we know that it's active. So there's a fair bit going on there, but if you follow along, you should, shouldn't do too badly. Uh, the first thing we want to do right now is grab our switch blueprint and drag it into our world. We'll just place it right in the middle of our stage here, up on the platform. It looks a little bit big, so I might actually rescale that to maybe 1. Point, oh, no, not 0. 0.7 actually. 0 0.7, 0 0.7, 0 0.7. Yeah, that's better. And I might go to top view so I can see what I'm doing a little bit better. Okay. Nice, it's placed right on that red line there, which is right in the middle. Scooch it forward a little bit. And that should look pretty good, I think. Okay. Okay, I like the placement of that, that's fine. Next thing we want to do is go into our Blueprint Editor. Go to Components, and we want to create a trigger volume for this. So we'll go add component, down to box, and I'll just call it trigger. Or you can call it trigger volume, whatever you prefer. And what I'll do is I'll press compile and undock this from the top. And the reason why I'm, I press compile is because I want to be able to manipulate it in the editor and see what I'm doing um, in my view here, so I'll just position myself over to this side and over to this side actually. I might go this side so the X arrow is facing the same way. Back in here, I'll press R to rescale it. And I'll move the scale out a little bit. So you can see now we're manipulating in the editor and we can see what we're doing. Um, in our perspective here. This is a good way so we can get a real-time idea of what the scale is like. And um, just exactly how we're manipulating it in the real world. I'll come out of here, I'll make it wider. working because oh, I've got the actual because I'm pressing the wrong button that's why oh, stupid All right. there and I think that looks pretty pretty good so our player will be able to walk up right in front of it and be able to use the switch when it's within the trigger volume that's the idea okay so now we can go over to our graph, right click on trigger, add event, on component begin overlap, and all on component end overlap. Now if you happen to have seen my other video on the door switch tutorial, you will recognize this script that we're about to do. It's basically a very good script for um, giving functionality in the sense of the player providing input uh, for a, a blueprint. Um, so what I'm going to do is enable 
make sense of it off. Enable input. And disable input. Now from player controller, we'll drag out and get player contact sensitive back on controller. So this is saying that it's going to receive play, it's going to receive input. Um, what are you doing? Okay. <laughs> okay. Uh, player controller with player index zero, that is basically you when you play the game. And the trigger volume that we've created is going to enable input and receive input from the player. Drag a line out from here. Bring in a gate. And we'll hook it up to open. And from enter, drag out. And I'm going to use E because I like to use E as a use button. And that's it. So basically, the gate is going to stop the signal from continuing through until we press E, provided the player is within the uh, trigger volume. Uh, if we didn't have the gate here, basically, as soon as you step into the trigger volume, the signal is going to send straight through and just it's going to keep on going all the way. So this is what we do to prevent that. Next, we'll drag out a sequence. And what a sequence does, it will fire off however many pins that we have connected here. Um, it'll fire them off one after the other. So it's a, it's a, it's a good way to get things firing at pretty much the same time, even though it does happen in, in the order that we have, have placed it in. So I'll drag out over here, the gate, and we'll connect that to open. And with this, what we're doing here is basically going to be checking to see if our switch is active, which it is going to be when we start off. Uh, we create a gate first, and then we will do the check to see if the, um, the switch is active. So we want to create a variable for that. Go up to my blueprint, add a variable, and call it is active. We'll compile so we can give it a value. And down here where we have default value, just check the box is active. That'll make it true. So drag out from then one. A branch and we'll drag in is active as a getter and we'll hook that up to our condition so it will check is is active true if it is true then it will open the gate otherwise um, the signal won't be able to pass and basically it's a way of making the switch actually inactive. So if the switch is active, what we want to do is now make it inactive. So drag out, actually we'll drag in is active as a set. Connect it up and we will leave the box unchecked. So um, it is now false. The next thing we want to do is set the material of our switch. So set the material of switch. And we want to make the material the inactive color. So we'll go over to our content browser to where we stored our material. There we are. Switch inactive. It's the red one. And we'll use the asset from the content browser. So now this has basically set the switch to inactive and given the material of the switch inactive color. The next thing that we want to do is actually spawn our bomb. So um, we will go spawn actor, whoops, spelling, spawn actor from class, and under class we will actually select our blueprint. So just find our blueprint. BP bomb and then we want to determine where we want to spawn it so if we go back to our map go to top perspective we'll be able to see the entirety of our map here so this is our map 
we know that we've created the dimensions of the map 10,000 by 10,000 and we place it right in the middle so the XY coordinates of that center point is 0, 0 and uh, what we want to do is maybe place the bomb somewhere within this second half so it's away from the stage or maybe not necessarily uh, from here we might send it back here or maybe here give it like maybe minus a thousand so if we go back this way on our X it will be uh, minus a thousand and to that edge five thousand and five negative five thousand positive five thousand that way or the Y so go back to our blueprint what we want to do is um, get a random float in range Control w to copy that and this will be our X and Y random numbers so we'll do the X first say minus 1000 to 5 actually I might I might not make that 5000 I might make it 4800 just so it's a little bit back from the edge we don't want the bomb the possibility of the bomb landing right on the edge we well, might but I'm not going to go with that so the y minus 4800 positive 4800 and next we want to make make the vector so great it's already connected to our x value connect this one to our y value and because uh, we want the bomb to spawn somewhere in the sky, we don't want it to spawn in a random location, we'll give it a fixed location of, say, 8,000. Okay, so now we want to make transform. And this will actually set the coordinates of our bomb when it gets spawned. And we'll connect it up to spawn transform on our spawn actor. Uh, also we want to um, switch the rotation, so either on the roll or pitch, switch it 180 degrees because the actual bomb itself is facing up, we want it to face down. So. The next thing we want to do is add a delay and give it say 10 seconds. And then we want to actually uh, set is active back to positive again. So drag that in as a setter, connect it up, check the box and then reset the material back to active. Set switch material, go over to our content browser, select our active switch material, and click there to give it that value. And this is all of our visual script right here. That's everything, all we have to do is compile, save, and now we can test. Back to our perspective. Okay, let's see how this turned out. Display. And E. Okay. Let's change color. There we go. Notice how I wasn't able to spawn more bombs while it was red, but while it's green, it spawns another bomb in a random location. Alright, looks like it's working pretty well.
Well, I hope you learnt something, guys. Um, hope you enjoyed the video. If you did, maybe like, favourite, subscribe, and share with friends of yours who also make games in the Unreal Engine. Um, there will be more videos in the future. Um, so until next time, see you later.